About half an hour ago, YouTube slapped this video in my recommendations feed for reasons that are completely unknown to me, because I've never heard of Vsauce before. Today, cards on the table, no idea who he is, but apparently he's kind of a big deal and far more intelligent than I'll ever be. Uh, but he's presenting this theory, which I'm assuming he didn't come up with. It's probably been a thing for a while called the napkin ring problem. Again, it's not really a problem, it's more of a theory. But that is, if you take two spheres of different sizes, so he's got here a tomato and an orange, totally different size spheres but if you core them out at the same height the resulting solid uh, on both sides is going to be the same weight it'll have the same volume and if you slice through them the surface area of the slice will be the same on both objects hmm it's a curious theory so he then goes on to discuss it a bit more uh, so he's got the, the you know the orange peel and the tomato both of these objects are the same height but they weigh the same and have the same volume and cross-sectional surface area talks about it and then he goes on to uh could present it quite well via 2D sketches and then goes on even further to uh, chart out minutes and minutes and minutes of maths and formulas and Pythagoras theorems and hypotenuses and pies and square roots of x, y's and z's and I thought just thought bless you mate bless oh bless I can do this in about three minutes in 3D CAD <laughs> I'm gonna do that uh, but that's not to say, obviously, that uh, anybody that needs to do this kind of thing in the maths class has to go out and spend two and a half grand on a 3D CAD license. Not saying that. And I am absolutely not saying that. I am anywhere near as clever as this guy. I can't do any of this. This is way beyond me. We are a 3D CAD tutorial channel, and this is the kind of thing that you can do in 3D CAD. And the tools you will use to do this kind of thing can be applied to other areas of your work. It's good to know about these things to be, able, to be able to apply them in other areas. So we're going to perform this experiment in 3D CAD and then we'll, we'll take it from there. Right, so heading on over to 3D CAD, we're going to go to Autodesk Inventor and we're going to model up two spheres of two totally different sizes to test this theory. So the first sphere is going to be a primitive sphere on the XY plane and we're going to start at the center and we'll make this 100 mil in diameter. Uh, and there's our first sphere, all done and dusted. We're going to make this out of copper. Let's make this out of copper and we'll give it a nice colour just so it looks nice. So you're not just looking at boring grey mass of, of nothing. And then we'll make it look nice. Let's make it look realistic with some shadows on and we'll stick it in an IBL. And yeah, that, that'll do. That'll do. Right, there's our first sphere. So we're going to make another model. We're going to make a second part. I'm not going to make the two spheres in the same part because the 3D CAD software considers two solid objects in the same part to be made of the same material. It considers them all one object, which will make it difficult to try and calculate the volume uh, of one of the objects or the mass of one of the objects when they're both in the same part. It's not impossible, but it just makes it far more difficult than it needs to be. So it's just easier for the sake of this experiment to make them separate parts, which in the real world they would be. So the second sphere is going to be modelled in the exact same way, but this one, let's make this hugely bigger. We'll make this one two metres in diameter. So this thing is massive. This thing's absolutely huge compared to the other one, which is 100 millimetres in diameter. And we'll make it of the same material. So we'll make this one out of copper. Uh, we'll colour it the same. Glossy gold. What well, didn't make it glossy gold, did I? I made it gold metal. And then for shadows, we'll turn those on. And then we'll make that realistic and put it behind an IBL so it's all the same. Hey, shadows, come on. Okie dokie. Right, that's the second sphere. There's the first one. So we'll put a 3D dimension on these just so you can kind of see which one's which. So that's the one that's 100 mil. And then this one here. Annotate. Yes, yes, and yes. Two meters in diameter. Right, we've now got to core it out. So we're going to go to a work plane and we're going to, we're going to drop a work plane on the X, Z plane and then float it up by let's say 40 millimeters shall we say 40 millimeters up so it's going to slice around that point there so this region here this sort of dome shape here that's going to be the profile that's going to core the sphere out so 40 millimeters up we're going to sketch on the plane we're going to then project the cut edges finish that sketch and then using extrude we're just going to do a cut through all in both directions and then there's our napkin ring Woo! gold copper copper gold plated napkin ring this is what everyone wants for christmas right visibility of the work plane off because they're hideous and then we've got to do the exact same thing over on the other sphere which is going to be the the 40 mil offset which on a two meter 
diameter sphere is going to look silly, but it is what it is. All right, we've got to we've got to stay true to it. So we're going to do a work plane, uh, float it up above the exit plane uh, by 40 mil. Sketch on that, project cut edges, finish the sketch, and then repeat with an extrusion, cutting through everything in both directions. And there's and there's our second object. Right, you can see it's massively bigger to that one, but apparently, apparently, so they say, this object here and this object here weigh exactly the same. Exactly, not nearly, exactly the same. They've got the same volume, and if we slice through them, the same surface area inside the solid. So how do we do this? Do we have to work out the density of the, of the material and then do Pythagoras times pi over x, y, z? No. All we do in 3D CAD is we just query the software and we say, give me the mass, and according to the CAD software, if this was made of copper, it is 2.397 kilograms in weight. That's exactly how much that would weigh if it was in real life. Let's head on over to the second model. We'll query this. And what we'll find is it weighs exactly the same, 2.397 kilograms. In terms of volume, it is 268,000 millimeters cubed. And then we'll go back over to the first part and query the physical properties. Exactly the same, 268,000 millimeters cubed. Absolutely exactly the same mass and volume right but what about the cross section well this is where we start to use tools that you might not have otherwise have come across and it's not something i've ever touched on on this channel these tools here uh, which is which is mostly the reason why i'm doing this because it gave me the opportunity to show something new which i've not really shown before and that is to use the cross sectional uh, inspection tools to do a cross section there's a number of different ways that you could approach this if you were to do the sort of hack way you could maybe do a sketch kind of in the middle and then what you would do is take the, you know, you can, you can press F7, slice the material, do project cut edges, and then you can work out what the, the area is between these two lines here, uh, which would be difficult to do because that region there doesn't exist. It's a theoretical uh, cross section of, of material. Uh, so there's an easier way of doing this. What you do is you go to inspect, you go to section, ask for an advanced section, and then you pick the starting point of the cross section. So to keep things simple, we're going to start the cross section through the middle of the sphere, which is that there, that plane running through the middle. And we're going to ask the software for three cross sections spaced over, um, say 25, 25, no, let's go 30. Three cross sections spaced over 30 millimeters, and then simply hit apply and there's your cross-sectional areas. No requirements for formulas and equations and napkin math. Just click, click, apply. <laughs> there you go. Isn't this a wonderful time to be alive? <laughs> oh, I still wish I could do the formulas, but I can't. I'm not even going to try. So the way this is presented is we've got three cross-sections through the solid. The first one is this one here and that is 5,000 millimeters squared then we've got 4,300 and then 2,200 uh, cross section one two and three once we've done that the cross section will remain in the modeling environment in view so you can mouse over it as well and it'll tell you exactly what the cross sectional areas are so there's the first one the second one 4,319 2199 so what we've got to do now is we've got to go over to the second solid uh, back into the inspection tools do a cross section ask for an advanced section through the xz plane give me three cross sections over 30 millimeters and then hit apply and there you go exactly the same 5000 4319 and 2199 and then if we zoom in you'll be able to see them they're very very thin walls but across the actual surface area of each of these sections is the same on both sides 5026 5026 second one 4319 second one 4319 and then obviously 2199 that was quite a memorable one 2199 indeed there's your cross section so that's how you take a slice at, num at numerous sort of equidistance regions in a solid in Autodesk Inventor and then report on that area. You can also use the cross-section tools to do wall thickness checks uh, and look at the thickness of the walls and if it surpasses a, a max or a minimum value, it can flag that 
Uh, but we can maybe do a future video specifically on these inspection tools. But for now, that was just quite an interesting one to do on the napkin ring object theory slash problem. There you go. I still wish I could do, <laughs> do all this, but I can't. I'm not even going to try. I'm never going to. I've never been good at maths. Uh, so I succumb to this guy's genius. He's far better than I am. But isn't it just nice to be able to, be able to do these kind of things now just in the click of a button in the 3D CAD world? Uh, it is it genuinely it is a good time to be alive when you can use software to do those kind of things. Uh, you do pay for it, but you can do it if you want to. So that's the napkin ring problem. Credit for the idea goes to Vsauce. Not that he needs it with his 12 million subs. Uh, but thank you very much for the inspiration for this video. Uh, you're watching TFI. If you like what I do, please feel free to consider supporting the channel over on Patreon. Uh, and I also do training courses over on the e-learning site, Plural Site. I've got a couple of inventor training courses over there, and I'm constantly actively working on more training courses. Uh, if you want to sign up for a free trial, my affiliate link is in the description of the video. Patreon link is in the post roll video, also in the description down below. Thank you very much. Hope this was enjoyable, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.